Good afternoon. I'm Albie Budnitz. I'm an internal medicine and pulmonary physician here in New Hampshire for the last, well, over 30 years, unfortunately. This is my nurse ratchet, I mean Victoria, and today we're going to talk about tobacco. Tobacco is the number one preventable cause of death and disability in America today and has been for 25 to 30 years, perhaps longer, but that's our data. Every day smoking and smoking related disease kills 430,000 people every year, every day that kills 1,200 people. Uh, and, in New and in New Hampshire, 1,000 kids start smoking every day. In New Hampshire, over a half a billion dollars is spent every year in tobacco related d disease. 21% of our New Hampshire kids, high school kids, smoke. Illegal for all of them in New Hampshire and all the other 49 states for many years. So shouldn't a product that causes so much death and disability be subject to regulation and protect consumers? Yet today, tobacco products are among the least regulated. They're exempt from basic health protections that the FDA, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, applies to other consumer products like dog food, bologna, drugs. I find out from, I, I, what I had to do because of this is to find out for myself just what is in this, this wonderful drug delivery device called a cigarette. Here's one of the new brands for kids called Twist. And I'm going to uh, t take one out with some help from my assistant here, Nurse Ratchet, I mean Victoria. And um, see what's just in, take a history from it and then uh, do an exam on it, maybe even do a procedure on it. This is a highly engineered product. Thank you. Uh, the cigarette. It's actually one of the best drug delivery devices we know to mankind. Uh, it, gets, it gets nicotine into the brain within 10 seconds, average 6 seconds. And uh, it, what's happened lately to get kids started to replace the 430,000 people each year who die from tobacco related disease, they need replacement smokers. Kids are much more easily addicted than adults. And so they've now come up with these wonderful brands like Twist, some of these others you hear, you see here, Camel Number Nine. There's also cigars, as you see, little cigars. There's chew tobacco. They've increased the amount of nicotine in these little by little, and they've added flavors. In fact, we didn't even know what they did until we started doing something like this and taking a look. So, I'm going to, um, and I might add that when when you add things like flavors, and this the tobacco companies may or may not have known, they just want the flavor and the nicotine. They know they were getting more nicotine to get people addicted flavor so that they would at least get to the addiction point because it's such a harsh product otherwise. But what they may not know is when you combust it, when you light it and the smoke comes up from the ashtray, you inhale it into your body, you have, it changes. And you have, there, we know now there are over 4,500 combustion products, gaseous and particulate, of which 200 are toxins, 63 are human carcinogens. And lo and behold, we found something new lately. Scalpel, please. Thank you. So here we have one of these new cigarettes. And I'm going to dissect it, or try to. I'm not a surgeon, as you'll see. And see if we can find inside. I could have that other. Thank you very much. And if we can find inside just What will we find in here? Well, look at, lo and behold, I don't know if you can see this. Let's see if I can get it out. If you could, uh, there we go. Now, you just, now, look at this. Blue pellet. Okay, so this blue pellet, which we didn't know about till we went looking, actually contains chemicals that give these cigarettes sweet and other tempting flavors to go along with the addicting nicotine and as a result get more kids hooked and the tobacco companies need kids to be their replacement smokers for all the folks who are dying and with the colorful packaging that you can see and they're packaged and they're put in the in the stores near other things whether they be beef jerky which is also wonderful for you or other candy and other such things um, they put them near things like that so that kids can get at these uh, and despite all the harm that tobacco causes, they're exempt from the basic health and safety regulations that FDA has over things as simple as macaroni and cheese. 
So the tobacco companies take advantage of this loophole by marketing these deadly products to kids so that they can start with these. And kids get addicted much easier than adults, especially if you get them at their usual initiation age, which is seven to nine years old, so that by the time they're 14, most smoke, present-day smokers have been already addicted. It's harder to get someone addicted if they're already 19 or 20 years old or older. They only need a few cigarettes a week as opposed to several cigarettes a day for several days versus several weeks to get kids addicted in the same way you get adults addicted. Uh, so this is a deception from the tobacco companies and they certainly should be regulated. In fact, the Institute of Medicine uh, has come out with an order that says that what we need to do to dramatically reduce, reading their words, the significant public health problem is it's essential f to provide the FDA with authority over tobacco products. And in the bill in the Senate, in the House right now, companion bills, this they would do all the things that we've known for years with CDC programs that would enable us to prevent kids from starting, help p people who are smoking to, uh, to quit, and get rid of this number one public health scourge that we have in our society right now.